What there's the like, fuck were half of these? <laughs> like I, I understand really half orange. of these were red, but what, are they orange or rosé? What the fuck yeah, are right. they? Yeah. We're back with another edition of Blind Wine Tasting, and we'd love to give a shout out to Sometimes Always. All of the wines that we taste on the show from this point onwards are purchased from Sometimes Always, and one of the best things about them is that if you spend enough with them, they actually give you free wine. So what we're going to do is try one of these free wine boxes. So we spent enough and we got to level two on their rewards platform and let's see what they've given us. How's the packaging? So it's a little sheet, it's got a little note. Ah, Cobalt Ridge. Awesome little uh, Chardonnay, I reckon. Um, super cool, great little Macedon Rangers producer. So another example of the awesome wines they are getting over there at sometimes always. Amazing stuff, get amongst it. Alrighty guys, we're back to another edition of Blind Wine Tastings. We're actually gonna be doing six wines this time instead of five, because no one buys wines in fives. So this is your mix six recommendation just before your weekend. Let's, Let's go. go. Oh yeah, sorry. Wine number one. Let's do this. Wine number one, starting red this time. Pretty deep. It's a little ditty. Uh, all right, cool. Savory, interesting. Definitely old world. It's got this like whole bunchy, bretty thing. No tannin at all. So that's the only thing that I know that I reference in every time I drink a red wine. There's no tannin in it. It's got like little bit of barnyard funk, but like not too much. Uh, it's like the perfect amount, to be honest. This is like the if you're if you're interested in like savory styles of wine, but still a little bit juicy. This is totally like, yeah. Hmm. What do I think that's going to cost? I reckon, I reckon it's a $35 bottle of wine. I would happily grab six bottles of this. I probably wouldn't go full Dars, but six bottles, um, I think would, it's pretty rewarding drinking it. Uh, a very interesting color. I don't know if this is rosé. It looks, it's, Screamingly orange. I don't know if it's old or oxidative or sweet. This could be looking at it, this could be kind of anything. Almost looks like fortified, like the color of a fortified. Um this is really orange. Like there's rose orange, but Lockie, this is like this is orange orange. This is like Barocca. Really muted nose. You can't it's not like screaming out the glass. It's quite quiet, pretty closed. Maybe it needs a bit of time to open up. Interesting one. Uh I don't understand. I don't know if this is like a white wine with a lot of skin contact or if it's a red wine that's not very red. Maybe this is a bit of a weird thing, but I, I look at it and kind of just my head's already in Italy. That's and it's already in somewhere like Sicily as well. It's hard to figure out what this is, but it, it definitely feels like something with a decent amount of bottle age. I don't know if it's been oxidatively handled. I don't know if it's got skin contact. It's a very it's a very interesting wine. This one, a little bit, a little bit light, a little bit playful. I'm assuming not too expensive. Um, you know, I would go 12 bottles because I love this style of wine, and I think it'll be really interesting. Would I drink 12 bottles of it and would it improve in the cellar? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I, I, I think this is really drinking at its peak. I really, look, I like it. I think it's pretty good. Um, it's not extremely exciting. It's it's incredibly interesting. I'm gonna, go with, I'm gonna go with 25. And I'm sorry in advance if it's really expensive. That's more about me not understanding what this wine is, but I'm gonna say 25. But fuck if I know what this is. This is crazy. Um, I would hope, look, I would be happy if this was 50 bucks and I'd probably grab one bottle of it because this isn't something I'd wanna go back to um, all that often, but it is really interesting, really exciting. Sweet. Moving on to wine number three. Very similar. Um, this, the other one had a little bit more of the brandy sort of color to it. This one's looking a little bit more potentially like a rosé. Maybe it's a rosé. Oh, that's delicious. I really like this wine. This is like Saturday afternoon, sitting out in the garden. Got a cheese plate, got a bunch of mates, having a good time. 
I mean, if someone looked up orange in the, the dictionary uh, or orange wine, you'd probably see this, but this sort of feels like ro like a proper well-made rosé. In fact, it almost feels a little bit like a Romato style uh, Pinot Gris. I don't know why I'm getting Christmas vibes from it. Like maybe it's something that's, is it cloves maybe? Good, fun, um, tight little rosé. I'm still thinking it's maybe some kind of Italian-esque variety. Yum. Woo. Yes. So far, definitely my favorite of the week. Wowee, what are we doing here? That's so smooth. Oh my God. Six bottles. I'm gonna say six bottles. Um, I'm gonna say I'd love to pay 40 bucks for six bottles here um, because it's it, when I want rosé, I kind of want it in this style. Whether, whether it's rosé or orange wine, I hope it's rosé because I'm making it feel like it is. Um, this is kind of the style I want. Back on the red territory, it's lacking. A, oh, it's pretty pretty clear. I'd say it's definitely been f either filtered or at least settled over a long period of time. Hmm. Ooh, that's great. Big fan. Super easy drinking. Smelled like it was going to be a little bit more abrasive than it actually is. Grippy, savory. I reckon it's Nebbiolo. Um, I reckon this is still pretty young. I'd like to see this in a little bit of time. Yum. Yeah, yeah, that's giving me the yum yums. A little bit fruity, not too much. Like it's not really like that super, when you're drinking a big juicy red and it's got like almost cherry flavor to it, it hasn't quite leaned that way. Uh, again, not a lot of tannin. I might grab a bottle of that. Um, I wouldn't drink this too often, but still quite delicious. Um, I'd be happy to share that with people. I, I hope this is like a nice like entry level lunge something or other. Mm-hmm. Um, like a little bit of chalkiness. Oh, actually, there, maybe there is a bit of tannin. Oh, no, I'm going to look like an idiot. Oh, God. Uh, very, very cool one. Uh, big fan. Massive fan. But that said, I'm a neb head. So if you're into tannic wines, you're going to love this. Uh, and I'm hoping at 50 bucks, it just represents a really good bargain. Got him. Alrighty. Another one of these wines where I don't know if it's fucking rosé or orange wine. I don't know anymore. What is this? Ooh. Ooh. Have you smelt these yet? Yeah, when you get to this one. Whoa, that smells sweet. That smells really perfumey. It reminds me of um, a lot of skin contact uh, musket-based orange wines, whether it's a Bebo or Giallo or anything like that. Oh. It smells like elderflower, like elderflower vodka. Well, elderflower actually doesn't it doesn't smell like vodka. It smells like elderflower. I'm about it. Okay. That's a sleeper. That's a sleeper. That tastes bone dry. Really, really lifted aromatics. Aromatically, it is pretty and gorgeous and beautiful and light and fun. I'm not jumping over the moon, um, but I'm really excited by it. Um, and yeah, I think this is really tasty wine. Great structure, great acid, great fruit character. The fuck is this? Oh my god, why haven't I been drinking this for years? That's incredible! Oh, yum! Ah, oh, shit, oh, it's gonna be expensive. No! Oh. Um, this is that sort of wine that I would probably drink lots of. So straight up, 12 <laughs> bottles immediately. I wouldn't walk of probably 35 bucks. So these are all sitting at this sort of like really nice uh, accessible level uh, of pricing. All right. Now what do we got? Wouldn't want to follow that one. What are we doing here? We're doing more reds. Honestly, the color of this thing is really cool. So it is like bright, bright purple. Cherries. God, I've got a good nose. I reckon it's got a bit of cherry flavor to it. Could be completely wrong. Um, so someone's been, been kind of liberal with the level of oak on this. There is a vanillin type, uh, almost like vanillin extract uh, appeal to this. I mean, again, like, I'm just, I feel sorry for wine six because if it had been before wine five, then I'd probably be a lot more into it, but I'm just still thinking, I can't take my mind off it. Cool, fun wine, feeling Grenache, Shiraz, Mataro, like a GSM blend. I would hope to pay around $30 for this. 
and probably today I would be happy with the one bottle. I actually think someone's actually spent a decent amount of money on this wine and I think it's gonna reflect itself in the price point. So I'm gonna go up a little bit more, I'm gonna go 50 bucks. Um, and I personally, I would buy one bottle of this. I just find it a little bit, um, like this style is done quite a lot. Um, and perhaps it's not really showing its best today. So are we, we're up and we're, we're doing this. We're, we're doing this. All right, we're, first time doing six wines. I like it because it's nice and symmetrical. We've got three and three, so it just, it, it matches the OCD. Uh, all right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see, let's see what we're tasting. Let's jump into it. Wine number one, Lockie, what did we get? What, what was it? What do we got? Whoa! Oh, we, were, we were a little bit, we lowballed this a little bit. Um, so it was, what do you say, it was 49 I said, I said 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Product de France. Product de France. La Pau's uh, amazing um, uh, natural wine producer, brought in by Lo-Fi. Awesome. Um, super cool little wine. What's, if, the, what's the variety? If I'm not wrong, that means the stop in French, yes. La pause. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, moving on to wine number two. Bit of a controversial one here. Uh, didn't score so well uh, in the lineup. So what do we yeah. got uh, here? Look at this. We we were down for seven bottles uh, and a glass. Fuck off. Oh my <laughs> God. Sorry. I'm not. Dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> like these guys obviously have allegiance to the um, wine industry. So <laughs> this this is what in the business we call big. Label yeah. energy. This this hits the B B L E button. Wah, 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 wah. Oh my uh, god! Fifty dollars. Wow. I've never tried this before. Bro, that's like almost an. That's like half. This is Nintendo probably why Switch. I was. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably why I was confused because it's it's ten, this is ten years old. So yeah. that's why I knew it was oxidative. Oxidative and old. I yeah. wasn't sure if it was oxidatively handled or yeah. skin contact or anything like that. Turns out it's all of them. Um, <laughs> I, I, like I, I called it out for being perhaps fortified. Dude, I, and I yeah, I got that too. Yeah, this is fucking <laughs> wild. All right, wine number three. Uh, this one, I think we. This one was one of the highest scoring ones. Yeah. We all quite enjoyed this wine, I think, for what it was, which was for me just a fun, cheeky little rosé. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. what I, uh, I thought. It's like as I was saying, like I would like this around at all times when I feel like a rosé. This is like one of those fifty-fifty. If I feel like a rosé, half the time. Yeah, the what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? All right, bang on in the middle. We were going oh, back. Oh, Victoria! Awesome, that's fantastic. So this is between five bells, I believe. Yeah. Um, and in amphora, 800 liter amphora, tiny amount produced on the 1800 bottles. Amber wine, of course. So and not rosé. Majority Pinot Gris, Riesling, Greco, and Fiano. So yeah. Italianish, Italianish, not quite, not red varieties. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. No. That's where I got tripped up. It's Italian. Yeah. No, no, this, was... this was this was a tough pick. Um, as, as cool. we could uh, tell by drinking it, but that's that's a delicious wine. I would jump at the chance to grab that's great. any any number of the 1800 bottles in totality that are produced. <laughs> nice. All right, next, we're moving on to another controversial one. I was big on this. This is my first 12er. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, this this gave me Neb vibes. It this is, was, it's Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo d'Alba, Alunga Nebbiolo, yeah. and I was having to part with a decent amount of money, 50 bucks. Maybe we'll go a little bit yeah. further north from that, but not much. What, what have we got, Lon? Whoop. 56 bucks, yeah, and we got Nebbiolo. Yeah. No, Barolo. Yeah, so definitely Neb. Uh, 2016, great vintage. Look, okay, here, here's the thing. The reason I, I, I rated this one bottle, my thinking was I've had better examples of this style of wine um, in the past. Yep. Um, and I, I still believe that is true. But Barolo for this value, for 2016, it is really good. And I reckon I may have suffered for being the first person to try this in the room. It is opened up it's and glass a lot. So yeah. I reckon I might, if give me another round of bout, I may have reevaluated. But still, have a gunner. For, um, the, for the price, oh, fantastic. Exactly. All right, all right, I wanna know, number five, this was one that I jumped on because I thought this was a gateway drug for non-wine drinkers. And that's why Doily also put 12 on too. Loved this one. <laughs> <laughs> What's it worth, love you? What do we got? Oh, oh! Oi! Mate, bargain for Empty you. the bank account on it. <laughs> oh my god. What have we got on this Vinavolta? Converts Traminer Frontignac from Swan Valley. Well done, Vinavolta. Uh, changing the uh, the entire sort of perception of the Swan Valley as well. Yeah, one of, um, one of the stalwarts of the, the new wave coming out of that awesome that part of the world. world. Yeah, very, very cool. Into it. Do you guys want to try any more of that? Because I want that glass. I'm going to have to take it. It's fantastic. It's cool. Last wine, wine number six. None of us are really that into it. You're moderately into it. Um, a bit of a spectrum of price point, but really hitting that sort of moderate between 30 and 50. Stick a GSME. How much? 
90 bucks! Oh my thought. god. Wouldn't have thought so. Again, a classic stalwart of the industry, mate. Yeah. We, we must be Pino off. Sh Pinot Shiraz. Pinot that, Shiraz. That, that actually... So P is Pinot plus Shiraz, does that equal Grenache? Yes. <laughs> kind of in a way. Yeah. This is like, this is like um, if you don't grow Grenache, this is how to make it. So, yeah. This is, uh, cool. again, legendary Australian wine brand. Um, really cool. Um, and you should definitely try Yarra Yarring stuff. Um, I, I would not put this in the category of the stuff that you should try from this brand. Uh, dry red number one, dry red number two. So the fact the that you guys wanted one bottle each and I wanted six bottles, that means just I've got more respect. I just like think, wine mate, I this. reckon you are on point. With the exception of number five, uh, uh, you <laughs> dude. You don't know what good wine tastes like if you don't like this. This is delicious. not today. Evidently not. Um, this is the best. <laughs> and on that note, on that note, I reckon uh, that's it done for this particular week. A couple of weird curveballs uh, clearly thrown at us, and uh, Doily just smashing it out of the park. On fire. Doily. Literally. On Doily's fire. done well. Catch you next week, guys. Peace.